So next, let's talk about our focus palettes. Um, once again, 10 is a good number to have as a standard. The key here is really we just want to make sure that uh, when we hit a button, the lights move. And these focuses are very good tried and true rock and roll focuses um, that just look good every time. Uh, and they're just really good things to have in your tool bag um, rather than going through and setting up a whole bunch of different focus palettes that you may or may not use. And time management is a really large part of this. Um, if I only have a limited number of t amount of time with a rig or to set up a file, uh, I want to limit what I'm doing to only the necessary functions. So these top nine are the ones that I always use. Let's take a look at what some of these look like. So if I turn on my Trust 3 spots, for example, we can take a look at these. Uh, the first tried and true rock and roll focus is the XX focus. And you just take those lights and you cross them in X configurations. Then you have the XXX, which is the invert of that. Right? So we want these two palettes because um, then we can, you know, it's really easy, something's happening on stage, it's really easy to bump between them and it's dynamic and they're moving and there's something to happen. So a lot of this is about putting them in a position and then putting them in the inverse of that position. Right? We also have a low position, a low straight position. I always record this first because it's a really good utility position uh, and we'll talk about that when we get into how to record some of these. Next we have a cross hatch position which is taking the two sides and crossing them. Then we have that high position, right? So very good for flyouts. So we have this low position, and then we just tilt it up, and we get this high position. We get a, fa a fan out, which in many ways is the inverse of the cross hatch. We have a, f a fan out high. And then I always make like a random position. This one isn't so good, but if we were to bring everything else up, we'd see it, which are just like, in case things get weird or you just want things pointing in random directions, I'll randomize the position. So actually, if we were to grab all of our spots and bring them to full and put them in our random position, you can see it's kind of, they're kind of all over the place. It doesn't really look like anything, but if we run an intensity chase, you kind of get random beams. And if you are running an effect across that, it's a really cool way to just get like this million beam effect look. One other focus palette that I'll build is something I call home base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the lights and I'm going to put them in a position that they all look good in. So for example, I'm going to grab all of these spots and I'm going to put them in my home base position. And this is, you know, some of them are doing X's, some of them are doing flyouts. But what this allows me to do is I can build a base queue um, that everything else rides on top of where all the lights in the rig are in a home base. So if I was to grab all my spots, all my beams, all my washes and put them in the home base, and I was to turn them all off, right? I can bring up any of these sets of lights, and they're in it. Well, those ones are pointing right at the, uh, the camera. But any of these sets of lights, and they're going to be in a place that looks good. So this gives me just like a base to go to, where if nothing else is happening, at least when I turn the lights on, they're pointing in a direction that's interesting. Um, so those are the ones that I always record. And I record those for all lights that move. The, uh, I do also have a band focus and a blue out focus position. So band focus will be lights that are keying the band. For example, I have here some band backlights and some band side lights. And these are them pointing at the band. I also have different beam palettes that I use in combination with this. But you always want to make sure you light the band. Light the money. Um, I have a blue out position, which anything that is going to be in our blue out queue that we'll talk about when we get to setting up uh, our looks. Um, I have a blue out position. And then time pending, I will write a downstage right, a downstage center, and a downstage left, uh, as well as a drums position and a 50-50. So 50-50 is all the lights pointing straight down, right? Because I mo I've modified our home position with my home preset where all the lights are up at 45 degrees. Sometimes you just need to get them back to a known state. So the 50-50 position is really easy to write. We just take all of our fixtures, we'll turn them on a little bit so we can see what they're doing. And if we just put pan and tilt on our command line by tapping on the encoders or using our parameter tiles, zero enter, and everything's going to go straight down default. It's just a known way to get something back to our state, back to a known state. Um, uh, d downstage right, downstage center, downstage left are not typically 
you don't need them to run a show. It's just good for if someone runs out and makes an announcement or the guitarist downstage left takes a guitar solo and you need to do something on the fly you weren't expecting. It's just a good utility palette to get there. But they are the most time consuming to make. Uh, so I always leave them for last because if I run out of time, it's not going to make or break my show. Uh, worst case scenario is I end up having to dial something in live, which isn't the best, but uh, even worse than having to dial in one light live is not having your show done. So let's go ahead and talk about how to build some of these palettes. Um, I like to herd the fixtures, so using the tools of the desks to quickly do large, um, large groups of lights simultaneously. It saves you a lot of time. Um, and also, it ensures symmetry, um, and it's just a lot easier than going through one light at a time. So when I'm recording my focus palettes, I'm always going to use highlight, because it really easy, it quickly lets me step through these. So to enable highlight, there's a button on uh, the desk that says high enter. It's also a soft key if you're on an ion. Um, if I hit high enter, it's going to enter it in the highlight mode. It's going to say so on my command line that I'm in highlight. And I'm going to go ahead and select the group of lights that I want to focus. Let's say I want to focus trust three. I select them and they automatically turn on. But notice that it doesn't put any manual data for that in my live table, which is nice because then I can utilize record only to record these if I want to put them to subs as well. Um, obviously, a focus palette's only going to record focus information, but maybe I wanted to put this off somewhere else. Uh, I don't have to worry about extraneous uh, manual data. So first thing I want to do is I'm always going to record my straight low position first. So I've turned these lights on. They come up in 45 degrees tilt because that's where we set our new home position to be in our home preset. So it already looks pretty decent. But I like to define my low position as on stage and my high position as off stage or into the crowd. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tilt these on stage a little bit. There you go. That's great. And I'm going to record this focus position. Record only. And I hit that palette, and they are now recorded into that. So now if I turn those on again, and I send them to the palette, they're already still there because I hadn't snuck them out, but they're going to be in that position. Now I want to do my XX position. So I'm going to start these lights in my, in my low straight position, and I'm going to use fan. Fan basically allows me to set an anchor point or a series of anchor points and then move the, all of the lights simultaneously around those points. So what I want to do is I want to move in my XXX position. I wanted to make that cross position. So if I just choose fan center, which is uh, the fan I use most often, they're all going to go around the center point of that selection, right? So I have four lights selected. They're all going to move towards or away the middle because they're fanning from that, the center of that selection. I want actually these lights to point at each other, right? Get that X. So I'm going to reset these into my straight position. What I'm going to do instead is choose fan center. And then there's an option for repeat, repeat two. What this is going to do is this is going to repeat the movement every second light. So now, as I fan this, watch what happens. They're actually moving towards each other. So this is a really quick and easy way for me to get to that XX. It looks like I actually need to tilt them up a little bit to get better Xs. So if I, if I hit select last, I'm going to re-grab that group and get out of my fan mode. I tilt them up a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. And now I very quickly created these two X's um, using one command line. And the best part is they're perfectly symmetrical because the, the desk is doing the math. And then I'm going to record this only. So record only. I'm going to put them in my XX position. And now with that group of lights, I can go straight. I can cross them. But that's something I'm going to be doing a lot moving these in groups. So maybe that's another thing that I want to write a macro for. And you can actually see here that I do indeed have a macro already recorded from it. Two light fan set group of four. So if I have a group of four lights, it's going to do, move them in those groups of two. Um, let's go ahead actually and we'll record that macro real quick so you guys can have it too. I grab that group and I'm going to, highlight's going to turn it on for me. And then I want to record this fan macro. So learn. I find a place on my tile here that I want to put it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in macro 26, learn 26, enter. And now I just enter in the fan types that I want. I've already experimented, and I know that it's a fan center, repeat of two. So fan, center, repeat, two, enter. And then if I hit learn, now I have that as my macro. So it's really easy now for me to say I'm going to grab my trust three spots. I'm going to hit that macro. And now they're all ready to go. 
I don't need to go into the fan mode. So it saved me three keystrokes, right? And each keystroke uh, takes time. They, that adds up to a lot of time over the course of a day. I actually have, I make different uh, fan center repeat groups for different groups of lights. And uh, they're great for me to drag around from show to show because uh, I only typically want to work in even numbers. And you can see why there is if I had a center light, it wouldn't be doing anything and it would throw all of my grouping off. So these work in even numbers of fixtures. So if we grab trust four spots, for example, now we have six fixtures. So now if I grab those, I want a fan center, but I want it to repeat every third light. Fan center, repeat three. And now I can make all of these lights do their pretty XX and then record it and I'm done, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll record only and I'll make that my XX. Then while I'm here, let's be efficient about this. I'm gonna select that again. Fan, center, repeat, three. Now of course, I would make a macro for this. Um, you should too. But now while I'm here and the lights are in this position, I'm gonna make the opposite of that. I have an XX, I'm gonna make my XXX. I'm gonna go ahead and move them the other direction. Record only, XXX. And I've really quickly knocked out two of these palettes. And, it, and once I've macrotized all these different fan groupings, um, I typically have a four, a six, and an eight. Um, it's really easy. Oh, cool, eight lights are on, fan grouping of eight. And now I can make them move in that way. If I want to grab those same fixtures, I'm going to send them to our straight position again. This is why we record it first. It's a great place to go back to. I actually now I want to make that cross hatch. Okay, well, how do I do that? We, we've talked about the fan modes. We also have, um, we can combine that with our offset types and our offset groupings um, to do some really powerful stuff as well. So what I want to do is I want to take these two halves and I want them to cross in that cross hatch position. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab those fixtures. I'm going to give them an offset and I want two groups. And then I want to fan it. Fan, center, enter. And now it's taking those two groups and it's subgrouped them. So it's treating the left three and the right three as um, two different chunks. And then it's fanning, it's using fan center together. Splitting an array of lights into two groups is something I'm going to do frequently. So I'm going to record a macro for it. In fact, I have one here that's my macro for that says two groups. So all I have to do now is grab that group of lights, put them in two groups, and then I can apply whatever fan that I want. Fan, center, enter. And now I can really easily get to that crosshatch, and I don't have to go through the offset menu again, two groups, to get there. One other trick that I've done is uh, the, the TI and the AT5 and the GEO actually have this blank macro button right here above highlight. I am always using fan center. I'm using it all the time. This is macro 821. You can find that number in the shell. So I'm actually assi I actually have assigned that to be fan center. Um, so I actually don't have that up a bank up here. I, can, I have it down here on my keypad, so I have to move even less. Right? The further I have to move when I'm programming from this bank of buttons down here, the slower that I am. So I try to keep as much hovered around here as possible. Um, so it's, it's just something I can quickly grab. I can grab, grab the lights, put them in two groups, fan them center, and move them, and move on with my life.